back! <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the R case stumbling bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am back, feeling much better after having been sick at the end of January. And today I'm going to do a joint January-February wrap-up. The first thing I finished in January was Dark Theory by Wick Welker, one of our self-published science fiction contest books that Book Invasion was given for the first round. I do have a full review, so I'm going to send you on over there if you would like to know more about this book. It is a science fiction, kind of post-apocalyptic, far future book. I then finished the Horimiya manga series. Horimiya is about two people who meet in high school have a different op opinions or perspectives on one another while they're in school and then meet outside of school, become friends, develop a relationship. It's kind of slice of life and you get to see their further friendships. And I'm going to do a separate series review video for this manga series just to talk further about it. But it's one that I really loved and I would like to own someday to reread. I can tell you that now. I then finished Bloodletting, Are You of the Forgotten by Sean Thomas, another of our self-published science fiction contest books for Book Invasion Round 1. Again, I have a review for this, so I'm going to send you on over there. This is definitely a murder mystery space opera setting though. I then read Spy Family Volume 10. This is continuing the story of Twilight trying to get close to his target and to do so having to have a family. And in this one, his wife Yor actually makes a connection to the target's family that Twilight had not considered before. Ongoing series, not much more to say about it. I then read Comey Can't Communicate Volume 9. This is about a young woman who has a, a who has such a severe anxiety disorder with social situations that she is unable to speak in front of people. But because she is gorgeous, she gets a pass on that a lot of the time. People don't even like recognize what's going on. But her goal is to make a hundred friends during high school. And the young man who first noticed that she has this issue is helping her. I then finished Mortal Mission by Pitt Skinner. Also have a specific review for it. It's another of our self-published science fiction contest books. I'm going to let you go watch that. But this is a near future murder mystery in space. And then very much in the throes of COVID. This was the first time that I've, that I know that I've caught COVID since COVID has been a thing and it sucks. And the nice thing is I didn't have brain fog, so I could still read. So I ended up picking up Starter Villain by John Scalzi, which I had on my shelf already, and really enjoyed this. If you're sick and you need something that you don't have to put too much brain attention on, Scalzi's always a good romp kind of book to go through. This is about a young man named Charlie. His life has fallen apart. His wife has divorced him. He is down on his luck and then his long-lost uncle dies and leaves him an inheritance. And he gets drawn into a bigger plot and finds out that his uncle had been a villain and what that means. And so now you're going into the world of villains. This is, you know, humorous, lighthearted. It's a fun romp. I believe that this is the book he had been trying to write during the pandemic that wasn't working. And then and what ended up coming out before was the Kaiju Pres Preservation Society, which is also a fun romp. Really enjoyed the starter villain, the diabolical plots, and the long lengths people will go to make sure people are dead. It was just a lot of fun. And that finished January for me. February ended up being a month of rereads, basically. The first thing I reread was The Heart of Valor by Tanya Huff. This is number three in her Valor of Choice series. And we're following Torin Kerr, who has been in the limelight for things that happened in the previous two books and doesn't want to be. 
She wants, she's a soldier. She wants to be doing her job and she gets the opportunity to help an injured captain who has some interesting prosthetic work that's been done to accompany him on a test run for his prosthetic. And they're going to the planet called Crucible where Marines during boot camp go to get some fighting experience and things go wrong and Torin Kerr has to take charge, which I just love how capable this woman is and how she did. The great thing is, is she's not doing it on her own. She reaches out to people. She very much is like, oh, who has this skill? This is what I need you to do. And I love that about her, which is one reason why I love this first series so much. So this was an excellent reread, and it was my first five star of the year. I don't usually share this here because I think the content of the book is more important. And typically most of my books fall anywhere from a four star to a five star. I'm a mood reader, so if something isn't working for me, I put it down, which typically is the three stars and under. And then the only new thing that I read in February was, I'm not sure if it was a novella or novelette, I don't remember. It's called The Kingdom of Darkness by Sarah Monet. I got the link from a Stitch and Bitch where they were talking about things that were eligible for the Hugos if you nominate this is an alternate world happening during the Salem witch trials, but in this case, witches are actually real. And magic does happen. And they have witch finders who use burned out witches to find current witches. Very interesting. Like I said, we kind of set in the Salem area. If you read it, you're definitely going to recognize names from real life and again it's alternate history so that's why you have that there primarily follows a man who is a widow because his wife was accused of being a witch and she was hung before a witch finder could come and prove that she wasn't a witch and he then that witch finder then gets murdered and he is tasked with housing the they call them demiacs the burned out witches from before and they tried to discover who the witch is. And I kind of like how it ended up. It was a fun read. And then the other reread I did for the month is I binge read the Charlie Bone series. This is the first one, Charlie or Midnight for Charlie Bone. This is a middle grade series by Jenny Nemo that I don't think has gotten as much love as it really could have. A lot of people have considered this a ripoff of Harry Potter, and really the only things in common are it's set in the UK. It's a boy who has magic, and he goes to a boarding school. But everything else is actually very different. So, again, I don't think it gets the love that it, it needs. I am going to do a independent series review of this as well, and just talk about my experience rereading this series. A quick synopsis for this first one, Charlie discovers he has the endowment to hear thoughts and voices from photographs and paintings. And because he has this endowment, he is sent to Bloor's Academy, which has family history for him. And it's a boarding school during the week. He does get to go home on the weekends. So that's where I'm like, it's, it's different than Harry Potter. It really is. Um, you can look forward to a series review of this coming out when I'm not going to be coughing as much. Kind of going into March, I, I am in the middle of books because I don't go, oh, only read till the end of this month and then I won't, and I'll wait to start on the first of the next one. Yeah, I don't do that. I am 40% of the way to Shadow Baron. This is the sequel to Notorious Sorcerer, which was my favorite book of 2022, which means that I've been very nervous to read this. I actually didn't know about it until after it was out because there wasn't very good marketing and there wasn't really very good marketing for the first one in the, fir in the series either, unfortunately. And it's set in the city of Beijing where alchemists and magic are not allowed. 
though there are some caveats with the no alchemists. There's certain people who can be and can use that those things. So it's directly following the events of the first one. It's set like a few months later. Evans has definitely ramped everything up. That's all I'm going to say about that. I'm five chapters into Children of the Black, which is one of our self-published science fiction books for round two. Enjoyed it so far. And I am three chapters into The Outside by Ada Hoffman, which is also a kind of space opera following an autistic main character who's an engineer. One of my friends, Kristen L from SSF Reader, she has recommended the series to be on, to be nominated for the Hugo's Best Series category. And it's normally not a category I have a lot of things in. So I was like, well, let me read the first book and see how I feel about it. Otherwise, I don't mind putting it on my ballot. So that's what I'm currently working on. Will I finish it in the month of March? Well, I definitely need to finish this one since I have to have scores in for my four books. But that has been my reading wrap up for January and February. Obviously, I am still a little under the weather, so you will probably have heard my voice kind of cracking and going up and down. And I'm trying to cut out all the coughing. This has been my first video to film in like a month, so yeah. But I am back, and I've been watching your lovely videos for those who are my YouTube friends. So, you all have a great day. I'd love to know, what are you reading in March? And if you've read any of these books, I'd love to know your opinion as well. Thank you, and have a great day.